Hello everyone, this is Alice Gao. In this video, I'm going to keep talking about handling real valued features when we generate a decision tree. In the previous video, I talked about a simple version of doing this. For example, let's consider the feature temperature, which has continuous values. We'll first take the data set and sort all the data points according to this real valued feature. I've already done this and sorted the data set based on increasing orders in the value of temperature. Next, we'll look at when does the value of this feature change. And whenever the value changes, that's a possible split point for us. So for example, the value changes from 17.7 .7 to 18.3. So we'll calculate the midway value between the two, so the average of the two, and take that average value as a possible split point. As you can see, if we do this, we'll end up with many possible split points. And for every possible split point, we can calculate the expected information gain and choose the split point with the highest expected information gain. This is a simple version of doing this, but we can do better than this. The reason is that if we follow the simple version, then we have to potentially consider many possible split points. There could be a lot, depending on how many possible values are there for this real valid feature. So can we do better and just consider fewer of those possible split points? Let's look at a slightly smarter version of doing this. I've written down the entire procedure on slide 44 right here. But let me explain this procedure using the data set. But you can refer to this slide for, uh, for all of the steps written down. The first few steps are same as before. We will consider one feature, in this case temperature, and we will sort all the data points based on this real valid feature. So after sorting, whenever the value of the feature changes, then we'll treat that as a possible split point. So the difference is that we won't consider all these possible split points. We will consider only some of them. So starting from step four, that's where the difference is. Let me take the midway value between 23.9 and 26.6 .6 as an example. So we are considering whether to think about this mid value, midway value as a possible split point. How do we decide? Well, on one side we have 23.9, on the other side we have 26.6. .6. So on either side, we will take all of the data points that have that value where the feature has that value. And then we'll look at all of the labels for those data points, right? So for 23.9, all of the labels, we have two, two labels, yes and yes. And for 26.6, .6, we have one label, no, right? So on either side, either side will gather a set of label values. Okay, so in the steps, I refer to these as Lx and Ly. So if I refer to x as 23.9 and y as 26.6, .6, then Lx, the set of labels for x, is, contains two things, yes and yes, and set of labels for y contains one thing, no. Next is the crucial step. Step six is where we decide whether to consider this as a possible split point or not. So step six says, if there exists a label A in L of X and the label B in L of Y such that A and B are not the same, then we'll consider this value as a possible split point. So the key word here is there exist, right? We have ex existential quantifier. So as long as we can find one thing in one set that's different from one thing in the other set, then we say, yes, we'll consider this. So let's apply it. In this case, well, 
L of X contains two copies of yes, where L of Y contains one copy of no. So really, no matter how we choose, we're going to end up with two labels that are different, right? So anything in L of, L of X is yes, and anything in L of, L of Y is no. So A, for example, has to be yes, and B has to be no, and A, B have to be different. Therefore, our answer here is yes, we will consider the midway value between 23.9 and 26.6 .6 to be a possible split point. So finally, the last step is that we will figure out what are all what are the possible split points based on this procedure, and then same as before, calculate the expected information gain for each possible split point and choose the one that has the highest expected information gain. Intuitively, you should be able to see that this procedure rules out some of the possible split points that we would have considered before, but we won't consider now, given this new procedure. In the next few slides, I have three clicker questions. These are meant to uh, give you a chance to practice applying this procedure and look at some of the different cases that we might have to encounter. You can refer to the slides for the questions, but it's easier for me to explain everything on this slide. So I've labeled for you what are what possible split points are the three questions referring to. So question one is referring to the split point between 20 and 20.6. Question two is referring to the split point between 21.1 and 21.7. And question three is referring to the midway value between 21.7 and 22.2. So pause the video, take a minute, and solve all three questions yourself. Your answer should be either yes or no. Yes means we would consider that this value as a possible split point based on the procedure that I just described and no otherwise. And once you get your own answers, keep watching for the answers. Let me talk about the answers. Question one first. Between 20.6 and 21.1. Sorry, between 20 and 20.6. So for 20, there's only one data point and there's only one label yes. For 20.6, there's also only one label yes. So both sets are the same, which means no matter how we choose a label from either set, we will end up having two of the same labels. So therefore, the answer to this is no. We are not going to choose this as a possible split point. Intuitively, this also makes sense, right? If the label did not change from one data point to the next, then this is probably not a useful place to split up the data set. It might not give us useful information. But you can see that this is a very local test, right? It only cares about what happens closest to the split point. It doesn't care about things happening far away. So you can think about this as a heuristic. This procedure does not guarantee that we will do the best thing. It just guarantees that we will do something reasonable based on local information. Let's look at question two. Question two says, what about 21.1 and 21.7? Well, on either side, we have one data point and the corresponding labels are yes and no. So in this case, no matter how we choose the label from both sets, we will end up with different ones, right? One only has a yes and the other one only has a no. So in this case, yes, we will consider this as a possible split point. Again, you can see that based on local information, this split makes sense, right? Because the label changed from one value to the next. So maybe we want to split here because the local information tells us that something happened here. Maybe this is a good place to split to make different decisions. Finally, question three. 
Question three, on one side we have 21.7 and on the other side we have two data points for a change. So on the other side we have 22.2 .2, and there are two data points. So on one side, our set for L of X only contains a no. And on the other side, our set L of Y contains two things, no and yes. This is where we have to be careful. A common mistake here is to look at the split point, which is right here. A common mistake is to say, oh, on either side, we have the same label, right? We have no, we have no and no. So because of this, we're not going to split. But remember that the procedure did not say this, right? The procedure says we are going to consider two sets. So we will consider two sets. One set has a no and the other side, the other set has a no and a yes. And we'll pick one thing from either set. And if we can pick the two things in a way such that the two things are different, then we'll consider this. Well, in this case, is that possible? That's certainly possible, right? For the first set, we can pick no, we can pick A equals no. And for the second set, we can pick B equals yes. And by doing this, the A and B are different. Therefore, we will consider this as a possible split point. So the answer here is yes. And this is the trickiest case out of the three questions. In summary, you can intuitively understand this procedure as follows. We will consider uh, two values of the features that we will consider the, the feature changes from one value to the other. And for either value, we'll gather all of the data points corresponding to that value. And if we can find two labels for both feature values where the two labels are from either side and the two labels are different, that means it might be useful to consider this midway value as a split point. So we'll do that. That's everything for this video. I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.